Hey guys, welcome back to another Chief Pep video. In this video, we're gonna assemble the crankshaft and the gearbox. Welcome back. So finally, it's time to assemble that engine. It came back from wet blasting and I've located the best parts which I can find from an XV700 engine to put into it. So I'm talking about gears, I'm talking about the crankshaft, and um, yeah, those parts look really new, as you can remember from previous videos. So without further ado, let's dive into it. I wouldn't be needing the motor lift since the bike will be at the workshop for the coming period. Therefore, I prepared it as an extra workbench for my engine assembly. I cleaned all the surfaces for this. It's always very useful to have a wooden engine frame to keep the engine in place when you're working on engine assembly or disassembly. My engine halves were tied together with tie wraps for the time being. Even though I worked on the XP750 engine several times and I know most of the parts in assembly order, I always have my Haynes workshop man manual handy. You might forget small stuff and it saves you a lot of time to figure out how things should fit. This is what I'm gonna do. Basically, there are four big items. Installing the current shaft, installing two gearbox shafts plus gears, installing the shift cam, installing the shift forks. It's not that complex. The shaft gear housing is something you don't want to disassemble. It's very hard to get there and you require a lot of special tools. You work only with the left engine half. This is where you place in all the gears and crankshaft. The right engine half will be the lid on the end. First I cleaned all the bearings I didn't take out before the wet blasting. And I cleaned every last trace of dirt or filth. I always have a really handy syringe in my garage, which I fill with engine oil to oil every bearing very precise. You want all the bearings or moving or sliding parts to be well oiled before putting everything together. Especially when you cleaned them for, with for instance braking cleaner as I just did. It has been a while since I disassembled the engine so I got all my boxes out and laid down all the inner parts on my motor lift to have a good overview what needs to be installed. The crankshaft would be the first part to install. Now it's nearly impossible to install the crankshaft in the left engine half without special tools or too much force. The same goes for bearings that you took out. There is a very easy way though, and that is to just simply put it in the freezer for 24 hours. The metal will shrink quite a bit and then it will fall in place just like that. To be honest, I forgot to do so before this evening job, so this is a cut between two days. I always test fit things before installing them permanently. Also to understand the workshop manual better, it's good to see what you're going to do. There are, these are the two gearbox shafts that will fit like this. Now notice my crankshaft isn't yet in place because it's in the freezer, which should be the case before you start this assembly. This is only for test fitting. This is the oil gear, which goes on the crankshaft after the crankshaft is installed. It's a really horrible gear to get off and to mount, I know out of experience. It's impossible to get it off without the best puller you can find and hardly impossible to get it on without a hydraulic press and a good fitting tube of some kind. I was mentally preparing when and how I would install it this time. Since I reserved this evening for engine assembly, but I couldn't continue due to the crankshaft which was in the freezer, I decided to continue and prepare everything I already could do. For instance, installing the neutral switch together with new seals. I have all types of copper seals and rubber seals and never reuse the old ones. This is the next day and important is that you already really heat up the surface where the bearing or items will fit will, will be installed. For this I use a heat gun, but you can also lay your engine half on an electronic st stove for instance. Even though your bearing or shaft is frozen deeply, often this is not enough. I never take a chance, although I have to admit sometimes I am a little bit too impatient and don't take enough time for this heating process because I know I have a hydraulic press and it will manage anyway. I could easily tap in the bearing with a nice fitting socket and rubber hammer. I think if I heated up the casing more, the bearing would just fall in. I oiled the bearings some more in the end. 
then it was time for the crankshaft. I know that this is an easy job, unless you do it right in one time. It's horrible if the shaft goes halfway in the bearing and then gets stuck, for instance. So never take a risk with leaving it too short in the freezer or heating up the engine half not long enough. Also really important is that you pay attention before installing the crankshaft that you have the right connecting rods in the right cylinder hole. I once made this mistake and I could redo the whole process again. As you can see, the shaft just falls in like that. Now since the crankshaft is still frozen, I hope to install a really hot oil gear on it at the same time. I had to carefully tilt up the engine half to get there and be careful that the heavy shaft wouldn't fall out of place while it's still cold. I noticed soon enough that this wouldn't work and I would have to do it with my hydraulic press anyway. As you can see the crankshaft is still, still very cold which is good for this operation. I figured I would just use the same puller tools to press the gear back as with which I took it off. With these forces, it's really important that you constantly check if everything goes on straight and you don't damage anything, especially not the crankshaft. Therefore, it's very important that the pressure is only at the shaft and not, for instance, on the cheeks of the crankshaft. I constantly adjusted the puller to make sure every side gave the same pressure. Then the oil gear was in place luckily. I still hate this gear because it's a real pain to get it on or off. Now for the gears and shafts. I oiled every sliding hole really well with my syringe on the shift cam. Also for this I heated up the bearing to make installation more easy. I installed the cam making sure the neutral pin is at the neutral switch. Then came the gear shafts. I oiled these also very well. You install these together with the fifth gear shift fork on the bottom. It's important that you leave the shift forks in order and right side up when you take them out so you don't make a mistake which fork goes where. Then oil the other forks really well and install them at the right place one by one without the shift fork guide bar. You slide this in at the end. The whole operation is actually very easy. While testing and turning the gears I oiled everything a little more. I finished with installing the shaft gear and everything runs like new now. Then I got the right half ready and noticed that this had some bearings as well that I still need to install and thus need to put in the freezer. So I ended up doing everything I already could and did the same as with the left helm. I also already started by adding new rubber ceiling rings here and there so everything will be ready for the closing of the cases. So I, as you have noticed, I haven't closed the engine yet. Um, to be honest, I, um, I was in a kind of a time squeeze and I also know that I had to edit all the footage that I made and this always takes me yeah, at least two nights uh, to edit it well, plus uh, uh, parts in my weekend. But um, it's all for the benefit of you, uh, my viewers, and I love to do it, so that's no problem and that comes with the deal. Now, uh, the rest that I want to do, I've made a decision to also coat the lower part of my cylinders. I'm going to coat them gloss black. Um, I've decided this to do this and I think it will be great. And furthermore, uh, what I want to check uh, the coming week is if I can polish uh, certain parts of my engine myself. I've uh, bought some uh, waterproof um, uh, sanding paper. And I'm going to try if I can, uh, can polish it the right way. I also have some uh, um, polish, uh, wax and etc. And some uh, special tools which I can mount on my drills etc. So I'm going to try uh, on some parts if I can do that. If that turns out nice, then I will do some uh, polished parts on my engine together with the gloss black cylinders. Uh, I think that will be uh, looking nice. And obviously I will close the engine. 
So, thank you for watching this video. Uh, as you know, you can subscribe to my channel and also watch my other videos. And if you have any comments or anything that you would like to discuss or to ask me, please leave them in the comment section below. And um, don't forget to give that thumbs up. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.